Cortez, the strange Mexican discovered by Jimmy Allen and Speed Robertson in the old Croft Ranch house, has told the boys that Rip Bender killed his brother and stole a chart showing the exact location of a vast hidden treasure buried in the mountains on the Croft Ranch. Old Mr. Bender is seen around the deserted ranch house and when confronted by Speed and brought inside, attempts to shoot the Mexican. To prevent trouble, the two pilots fly Bender back to the Diamond A Ranch and then take off alone to inspect the mountainous region between Twin Peaks, forming the western boundary of Mrs. Croft's property. As they cruise over the mesa, Speed notices tracks made by airplane wheels on the isolated tableland. And now, we find them cruising over the mesa. Take a good look now, Jimmy. Right under us. I think I see what you mean. Those long tracks in the short grass, they've been made by airplane wheels. Oh, yeah, and look, Speed. They lead up to that clump of trees on the edge of the clearing. You know, this mesa has been used as a landing field. There's not a doubt about it. Well, gee, think of that. A landing field 7,500 feet up in the mountains, hidden away between these twin peaks. Ah, hidden away is right. Hi, there are a number of tracks down there, kid. There certainly are. Hey, Speed, why would anyone be landing airplanes up here? Yeah, I'll let you and me go down and find out. There's certainly plenty of room to land. Okay. Shall I go down? Yeah, go ahead. Now remember, you're landing at a very high altitude. The air's pretty thin up here, so you're going to land a lot faster and require more room to get off. But gee, I hadn't thought of that. When you're used to flying out of fields at sea level and then get on fields such as this, you're liable to run into trouble. Hey, this will be a new experience, all right. Ah, but there's worlds of room here. Sure, you won't have any trouble. Hey, I can sure feel the difference in the way the ship handles. The controls are kind of sluggish. It's no wonder. The air at this altitude is at nearly half the density that it is at sea level. Well, hold everything now, Speed. Here we go on the landing. Okay, now, take it easy. Well, that didn't seem so hard. Fair enough. You set her down like a veteran. Now taxi over to that clump of trees, Jim. They're over to the right. I see. Yeah, that's where the tracks lead to. This ground smooth as a billiard table. Whoever first picked this place for a landing field sure knew he's stuffed. They didn't miss it. Well, now what, Speed? I better cut your switch and we'll have a look around. We're in no hurry. You know, Speed, I think this is the most wonderful sight I've ever seen. Why, why, this place is entirely surrounded with mountains and those twin peaks at either end. Oh, boy, they sure make marvelous landmarks. It's quite a spot, but I'd sure like to know what it's used for. And Rip Bender probably lands up here. He's the only one around with a ship. Well, Bender may have landed up here, that's true. But other airplanes have used this place. Now, look here, Jim, you see that? There's some airplane tracks. Now, see that wide tread? A little ship like Bender's couldn't make that kind of a track. By Jim, you're right about that speed. Hey, and look here. You can see the imprint of the tire on the soft ground. And a big wheel made this one, too. And yeah, that's it. Why, here, you can compare them with the tracks our wheels made. Notice the difference? I sure do. Well, what's the answer, Speed? Hey, you got me. There are no big ships operating around this part of the country that I know of. Of course, it may have been a hunting party or something like that. Hey, look here. What do you make of this? What do you see now? Isn't this an old can of lubricating oil? Well, well I'll be hanged. It sure is. Look, there's two or three more of them around here. You know, some people have used this place as a regular airplane bus, I guess. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Hey, hey, look off there in the trees, Speed. What's that? Huh? Come on, let's have a look, Jim. It's a shack of some kind. Hey, it's nicely hidden away in the trees, too. You can't see a thing until you're right on it. Ah, uh, what's this? Uh, some drums of gasoline. Uh, well, they're full, too. Well, we're discovering things, Jim. Hey, let's go inside this shack. Okay, let's go. Not even a lock on the door. Whoever it is doesn't worry much about being bothered up here. Hey, look, Speed. An old oil cook stove. There's a frying pan and a few dishes. Huh. Must be a shack some fellas who own an airplane used for hunting. Huh. Believe me, that's a great way to get up here, too. Oh, yes, Speed, but why would they put gas and oil up here? They could refuel at Devil's Pass Airport, fly up here and get back to Devil's Pass without having to refuel again. You're sure right there, Jim. In fact, they could go back and forth to the airport three or four times without refueling. Now, this is sort of funny. Yeah, and how do they get those big 50-gallon drums up here? 
You know, I wonder if there's any connection between this place and the ship that Barbara and I heard cruising above the clouds last night. Say, that's a thought. Sure. When you're above the clouds the way we are now, this field and the Twin Peaks are easily visible. Hmm. Well, there's this much about it. Someone has gone to a great deal of trouble to develop a base up here. Say, I wonder if we could find Ortez if we flew down around the Croft Shack. Let's do it. I guess there's nothing much more to see up here. Let's take off, Jim, and fly over to the ranch. That suits me, Speed. I want to hear the rest of Ortez's story anyway. When he sees our ship flying around, he'll probably signal us some way. Well, I told him to be on the lookout for us after you pulled old man Bender out of the shack. I didn't want Bender to hear me. You know, the one reason I'd be inclined to believe Ortez is the way old Bender acted. Do you suppose Rip Bender killed Ortez's brother? <laughs> Jimmy, Rip Bender would do about anything for money. At least that's the way I size him up. You took the words right out of my mouth, Speed. That guy looks to me like a sneaking coyote. Well, here we are. Climb in and turn her over. Okay, gotcha. Are you ready, Speed? Now, go ahead. Now, listen, Jim. Take a good long run. Remember, you're used to taking off at Kansas City, where the elevation is over 1,000 feet. Here, it's over 7,000. I'll watch it. Is it safe to go down through the clouds now? Sure, it's rattle back and go on through. You should come out right over the Croft Ranch House. Yeah, that is if you're a good navigator, Jim. You mean if I'm a good guesser, Speed? I'll take your glide easy now. A slow glide. These clouds may have dropped a little since we climbed up through them. Okay. I'll be careful. How do you like this cloud flying, kid? Oh, boy, I love it. It sure is a lot of fun. Now, watch it now. Your glide's a little too fast. Keep your eye on that airspeed indicator. There we are. Right under the clouds. I'll give her the gun now and take a look around. Isn't that the ranch house off to the south about three miles? Yeah, that's it, all right. I thought I'd hit it right on the nose. Oh, no. You not only have to be good, but lucky when you do that. Hey, Speed, what's that? Over there, west of us. What do you mean, Jim? I don't see anything. Look, crawling up that mountainside, see? Looks like a couple of fellas. At first, I thought maybe it was Ortez. Oh, I see what you mean now. Well, I'll be darned. It is two fellas, sure enough, crawling up that mountain. I wonder what they're doing. Let's take a run over that way, Jim. Right. Say, I wonder if that's Ortez and his brother. You know, maybe that was just a stall and his brother wasn't killed at all. Oh, well, that's a thought. We left Ortez right around in his vicinity, too. Circle around, Jim. See if we can recognize him. One thing for sure, they see us. They're looking up. Yeah, look at them duck under those trees. I guess they don't want to be seen. I'll bet you anything that's Ortez. That long story he told us about his brother was a lot of fun. I wouldn't be surprised. Say, look down there in that gully right back of him. See? See those two horses tied up? Yes, sir. They've tied their horses there and started climbing up the mountain. I'd like to know who those boys are. Hey, remember, Speed? Old man Bender said Ortez was a horse thief. Maybe they are. Maybe those are a couple of horses he's stolen. I'll tell you, let's you and me go down and find out. I'm curious to know what's going on in these mountains. Well, so am I, but... Jiminy, how in the world are we going to land down there? Now, wait a minute. Let me take a look around. Well, I don't see a spot you can land, Speed, for at least two or three miles. Jim, I think I can set this ship down in that clearing just above the gully there. What? Why, why gee, Speed, that, that's impossible. No one could land an airplane in that small oh, place. Oh, no, that's not so small. Oh, yeah, but it's entirely surrounded with trees. I can make it, kid. Well, I'd sure never try. Here, I'll take the ship. Okay, this is going to be good. Go ahead, it's yours. Now, now, I'll just dust off the top of these trees and pancake her in. I don't know how you'll ever do it. Yeah, the trick is to come in awfully slow, Jim. And just before you get to the clearing, bring your nose up and gun it a little. Now, what's this? Guy Speed, look out! Look out, Speed! Oh, boy. Oh, you made it. <laughs> there you are. You see, Jim, you can get into an awful short space when you have to. I learn something new about flying every day. Yeah, so do I. Here, I'm going to set her parking brake and leave the engine running. Come on now, let's slide down into that gully and see what's what. 
you look, Speed. Those fellas are coming back down the mountain, headed for their horses. See? Yeah, yeah, flying around, scared them, I guess. They're up to something or other, all right. Oh, come on, let's hurry. If we get to their horses before they do, we'll have them. That's the idea. Hey, Jim, did you put that gun in your pocket? The one that's strapped inside the cockpit? I sure did. You never know what you'll run into down around here. All right, take it easy now. They're the horses. Hey. Hey, I think we got here in time, Speed. Do you see them anywhere around? Yeah. Yeah, one of them stand with the horses, but here comes the other one. Okay, now get your gun out. Here's where we may catch Ortez and a little lie. I'm all set. Now listen, Jim, as he comes out from behind that drawer, throw your gun on him. Now get set. Don't worry, I'm ready. All right, get. Jimmy, hold it. Hold it. It's a government agent, Russell. Russell? Well, what do you know? Who is using the isolated landing field high up in the mountains? And what is Russell doing in this lonely land? And who is with him? For the answer, tune in to the next exciting episode of The Air Adventures of Jimmy Allen.